Hey everyone, welcome back to Integrate Sun. Today, we're tackling one of the biggest questions homeowners ask us, how big of a battery bank do I actually need? Here's what most people don't realize. The battery market has fundamentally changed in the last three years. For decades, homeowners didn't need batteries because of net metering. Utilities paid you retail rates for excess solar power, but that's ending fast. Regulators across the country are killing one-for-one -one net metering, and utilities are slashing buyback rates to as low as 2 to 4 cents per kilowatt hour. This means the old sell excess power to the grid strategy is dead. Smart homeowners are now storing that excess solar power in batteries instead of giving it away to utilities for pennies on the dollar. And whether you're looking at backup power for emergencies, trying to maximize your solar ROI in this new landscape, or planning to go completely off-grid, the answer isn't one size fits all. Stick around because by the end, you'll know exactly how to calculate your battery needs, avoid common sizing mistakes, and make the smartest choice for your home and budget. Before we talk battery sizes, let's address the elephant in the room. If you have solar without batteries, you're essentially running a charity for your utility company. Here's why. Traditional net metering works like this. Sell excess power for 12 cents per kilowatt hour, buy it back for 12 cents per kilowatt hour. But now, the new reality is, sell excess power for $0.02 cents to $0.04 cents per kilowatt hour, buy it back for $0.12 cents to $0.25 cents per kilowatt hour. The result is that you're giving away $0.20 cents plus of value for every kilowatt hour you don't store. Most utilities now charge 3 to 4 times more during peak hours, about 4 to 9 p.m., when solar isn't producing. A properly sized battery can shift your cheap midday solar to expensive evening hours, saving $150 to $300 per month on electric bills. Every home is different, so the first step is to separate your essential loads from your comfort and convenience loads. Think of it this way. Essential loads are things like your refrigerator, freezer, lights, maybe a medical device or internet router. Comfort loads include things like your air conditioning, heating, or water heater. Convenience loads, that's your TV, microwave, dishwasher, or washing machine. Let's look at a typical 2,000 square foot home in Texas. Their monthly usage is about 1,200 kilowatt hours, which breaks down to roughly 40 kilowatt hours per day. But here's the key, not all of that power is needed 24 seven. During peak summer days, their AC might draw three to four kilowatts continuously, but at night, their essential loads drop to just 800 to 1,000 watts. This difference is crucial for battery sizing. Most homeowners make the mistake of sizing batteries for their peak usage, but really smart battery sizing focuses on your typical daily patterns. Let's break it down with three common scenarios. Scenario one, emergency backup. If your goal is to keep the lights on during power outages, you'll need around 10 to 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage. That gives you about 12 to 24 hours of backup for your essentials. Let me tell you about the Johnsons in Florida. They wanted reliable backup during hurricane season. Their essentials, like lights, fridge, and fans, use around two kilowatts during the day and under one kilowatt at night. They installed a Tesla power wall with 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage. It powered them through outages up to 18 hours long. And during Hurricane Ian, while their neighbors went dark, they were just fine. Thanks to solar recharging their battery, and most outages last under eight hours, so don't overspend for those rare three-day blackouts. Scenario two, solar optimization. Here you're using your battery to store solar energy during the day and use it in the evening when electricity is most expensive. You'll need a system between 15 and 30 kilowatt hours. Take the Martinez family in California. They have a 10 kilowatt solar system generating about 45 kilowatt hours on a sunny day. Their daily consumption is 35 kilowatt hours, but most of their usage happens in the evening when solar isn't producing. Here's the crucial part. Their utility, PG and E, pays them only $0.04 per kilowatt hour for excess solar, but charges $0.51 per kilowatt hour during peak hours, 4 to 9 p.m. Without batteries, they were essentially losing 47 cents for every kilowatt hour they couldn't use immediately. With a 20 kilowatt hour battery system, they now store excess solar during the day and use it during expensive peak hours. This saves them about $280 per month on their electric bill, making their battery investment pay for itself in six years. Remember, size your battery to match your typical daily solar surplus on not your biggest production day. Scenario three, off-grid living. Now, if you're cutting ties with the grid completely, you'll need a serious system. We're talking 30 to 80 kilowatt hours or more, depending on your home and location. 
Let's look at the Thompsons in rural Montana. The Thompsons built an 1800 square foot home in rural Montana. Their daily energy consumption is 25 kilowatt hours, but they needed to account for three to four days without sun during winter storms. Their system includes 60 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries, 12 kilowatts of solar panels, and an eight kilowatt inverter capacity. Here's what makes or breaks off-grid systems, the ratio between your solar production and battery capacity. The Thompsons learned this the hard way. They initially installed 40 kilowatt hours of batteries with only eight kilowatts of solar. During short winter days, their solar couldn't fully charge the batteries, leaving them with reduced capacity. After adding four kilowatts more solar, they could reliably charge their full 60 kilowatt hour battery bank, even on partially cloudy days. The rule of thumb, you need at least five hours of peak sun to fully charge your battery bank daily. During our 12 hour winter test, running heat pumps, appliances, and lights, they used about 28 kilowatt hours overnight. With 60 kilowatt hours of storage, they had enough capacity for two full nights without solar input. If you're going off grid, you'll need to design around your worst case scenario, the longest stretch without sunshine. So how do you size a battery for your own home? Let's keep it simple. Step one, find your average daily energy use. You can use your electric bills or better yet, use a whole home energy monitor for two to four weeks. Step two, understand your utilities rate structure. This is crucial and often overlooked. Your local utilities time of use rates determine whether batteries make financial sense. Tier one, highest priority. Peak or off peak difference greater than $0.15 per kilowatt hour. Tier two, good candidate. Peak or off peak difference 0.08 to 0.15 per kilowatt hour. Tier three, backup only. Peak or off peak difference less than $0.08 per kilowatt hour. Let's take an example. In Arizona, APS charges 52 cents per kilowatt hour during peak hours, but only eight cents per kilowatt hour off peak. That's a 44 cents per kilowatt hour arbitrage opportunity. Every kilowatt hour you store and use during peak hours saves you 44 cents. Step three, determine your autonomy needs. One to two days for emergency backup, one day for solar optimization, and about three to seven days for off-grid, depending on your location's weather patterns. Step four, add a safety margin. You'll lose five to 15% to battery inefficiencies, temperature effects, and inverter losses. Step five, the solar production constraint check. Before finalizing your battery size, verify that your solar can charge it. You need at least four to five hours of peak sun to fully charge your battery bank daily. Example, 20 kilowatt hours battery divided by five hours equals four kilowatts minimum solar needed. Reality check, if you have six kilowatts solar but want 30 kilowatt hours batteries, you'll never fully charge them in winter. Step six, apply the enhanced formula. For grid tied solar optimization, battery size kilowatt hours equals excess solar production times days of storage times 1.25 safety factor. For off-grid systems, battery size kilowatt hours equals daily consumption times days of autonomy times 1.25 safety factor. Example is if daily excess solar is 15 kilowatt hours and your storage days needed is for two days, then the battery size needed is therefore 15 times two times 1.25 which equals 37.5 kilowatt hours. Solar constraint check, 37.5 kilowatt hours divided by five hours equals 7.5 kilowatts solar minimum. Step seven, don't forget battery chemistry and sizing options. Lithium iron phosphate lets you use nearly 100% of its capacity. Lead acid batteries, only about 50%. AGM can use 80% of its capacity. Available battery sizes and small residential can use batteries like Enphase IQ, 3 to 10 kilowatt hour modular. Medium residential can use batteries like Tesla Powerwall, 13.5 kilowatt hours, LG Chem, 10 to 16 kilowatt hours. Large residential and commercial can use batteries like Franklin WH, 15 to 225 kilowatt hour rack systems. Great. Now that you have a good picture of how to size a battery for your home, Let's talk about the most common battery sizing mistakes. Number one, oversizing for rare events. Don't design for that one in a million storm, use a generator instead. Number two, ignoring solar limits. You can't charge a 40 kilowatt hour battery with four kilowatts of solar in winter. Number three, 
for getting TOU rates. If your rates are flat, battery ROI drops significantly. Number four, low inverter output. Don't get caught with eight kilowatts of demand, but a five kilowatt inverter. Number five, limited roof space. No use installing huge batteries if you can't charge them. And number six, no plan for future loads. Plan modestly for growth, EVs, pools, or new appliances. Now let's talk about choosing the right installer. Here are some critical questions. Most installers won't answer. Can you show me a detailed load analysis for my specific home? What's my actual excess solar production? Not just theoretical. How will my battery size be limited by my existing solar array? What's the peak power output of the proposed system? At Integrate Sun, we don't just sell batteries, like we solve energy problems. Here's our process. We research your specific utilities rates, net metering policies, and any planned changes. We monitor your actual usage patterns for two to four weeks, not just look at your average monthly bill. This reveals your real peak loads and usage timing. We calculate your actual excess solar production based on your roof orientation, shading, and local weather patterns. We design a system that balances your energy goals, budget constraints, and physical limitations. Batteries are no longer optional in many markets. They're how you reclaim control from your utility and protect your energy future. If you're in these regions, click the link below to schedule a free consultation. And if you learned something today, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment with your solar setup. I will read them all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.